Released originally in Japanese arcades in 1993 and later coming to arcades worldwide in 1994, and making its first console debut in 1995 on the Sega Saturn, it's Daytona USA, quite possibly one of the most iconic arcade racing games of all time. Developed by Sega AM2 and published by Sega, Daytona USA was also later released in Japan that same year for Windows PC, and in 2000 for the Sega Dreamcast in Japan, and mid-2001 for the rest of the world. However, what you're currently seeing on screen now is the PlayStation Network HD remaster of the game released in 2011 for the PlayStation 3. However, it's also available for Xbox Live Arcade for the Xbox 360. It's more or less a remastered version of the Sega Saturn port, with a few additional details such as online multiplayer, but sadly, as of this recording, it's pretty much dead now. So for this review, I'll be focusing purely on the single-player aspects of the game. Daytona USA offers your standard arcade mode, giving you access to three tracks known as Beginner, Advanced, and Expert. Now, despite their names, you can adjust the difficulty and time limit for each track as you wish. The game also features a few extra game modes and features such as Challenges, Karaoke, Time Trial, and Survival as well as some new features like online leaderboards, and PlayStation Network trophies, and Xbox Live achievements. But is all of this any good? Let's find out first, in the good. I'd make the argument that 3D arcade racing games up until 1993 never felt or played this damn good, which is probably the best aspect of this game, the racing and the gameplay itself. Now, despite this game being considered pretty bare-bones compared to most modern racing games that we see out today, there is still plenty of fun to be found with Daytona. The racing still holds up pretty solid and looks better than ever with the HD treatment. This is definitely a race in the end that's very approachable for all skill levels and gives you plenty of difficulty options to choose from, and for the most part, the controls are simple enough to figure out. However, do keep in mind, that doesn't mean there isn't any mastery to learn behind them as well. Everything from knowing how to properly take corners and drifting will require some practice. The additional modes thrown at you in the extras menu will still throw plenty of learning curves your way, especially in the challenges. The challenge mode offers different challenges from reaching a checkpoint in a certain time span, to easily the most difficult challenges of taking certain corners on the track while maintaining a specific speed. If you slow down too much, you immediately fail. And once you start hitting speeds of over 260 km an hour and have to maintain this while cornering, it becomes almost trial and error. Seriously, I spent more time playing the bloody challenge mode than probably anything else in this game. Some of these challenges sort of reminded me of the license tests in Gran Turismo, but it's still fun nonetheless in a weird, addicting way. The extra menu, however, also includes a time trial mode, which is pretty self-explanatory. You race for the best times and upload your lap times to an online leaderboard to compare with your no friends that actually play Daytona USA in 2016 and upload lap times. But moving along, you've also got a survival mode, which basically to sum up, you race until you run out of time while the game scores you on how far you've traveled. You can regain time by hitting checkpoints, drifting, not hitting vehicles, or passing them all together. The more damage your vehicle takes, the slower you go. Not to mention your tires will also slowly wear down as well. So if you aim to go for an insanely high score, you need to hit up the pit stops to repair your vehicle every now and then. Which thankfully does freeze the timer. And you've also got the karaoke mode, which more or less is just a standard race, but with a karaoke sing-along text down below to sing... to yourself. Now there's an idea for the next Gran Turismo game. And speaking of music, the soundtrack in this game is, well, as you've obviously heard throughout the review, if there is one thing Sega nails with almost all of their first party games, it's the soundtrack, and Daytona USA is no different.
But with all that being said, let's now discuss what this game doesn't quite nail with the bad. Probably the biggest issue I have with Daytona USA, or for this release of the game anyways, is the lack of vehicle variety you can choose from. You're pretty much limited to only using the Hornet, either an automatic with a blue color scheme, or in manual with a yellow color scheme. Which is kinda disappointing considering the Dreamcast release of the game offered a few more vehicles for you to choose from and unlock. Hornet! Grasshopper! Vulcan! My next gripe would simply be the lack of a replay camera. Aside from the victory lane you did after winning a race, there really isn't any replay option or replay camera available. Next up, the game lacks any kind of restart race or challenge option. And during my time spent with the challenges, there was the odd time I couldn't simply restart the challenge, even if I already knew I failed. So I'd have to wait for the timer to run out, which kind of became annoying pretty quick. As for the technical aspects of Daytona USA, for the most part it ran fine, no crashing or any major bugs. The only issues I noticed was some pretty visible pop-in, and a lot of clipping issues, and not to mention the AI driving randomly through objects every now and then. Sure wish the Hornet could do that. But now it's time I give... the opinion. All in all, Daytona USA is a fantastic arcade racer. Despite being fairly limited in race options compared to more modern racing games, but from 1993 to 1995 it was considered cutting edge, and probably one of the best 3D racers of its time, and there is still plenty of fun to be had with it today. But with all that being said, now it's time for... the rating.